So now it's a challenge to hit it. Oh my god, this is hard. Okay, fuck! Is he still well for the experiment? Well, what's the name of this guy? <laughs> Jose. I think Jose has a bit of... Brain damage. Brain damage, but it's okay, he still wants to climb. Okay, Jose number two. That was close, Jose. But it's not his lucky day. <laughs> Maybe he does his lucky day. So, Jose, no more Jose. Now we try helmet on Jose's friends. To be honest, I'm not sure if helmet will protect from such a huge fall. So maybe I should try from lower first. What do you think? I am curious, <laughs> I don't think. So which one is next? The moustache one. The cat already is running away. <laughs> Cats are smart. Come here. It makes me feel bad. It looks like my grandfather. This guy looks like your grandfather? Yes. You're I made right? him thinking of my grandfather. Okay. So. Uh, Grandpa, you have a rock fall. Well, let's see. That feels bad to do, to be honest. <laughs> what? It survived! <laughs> I cannot believe it survived. So the helmet actually is now squishy in the middle. And the grandma is not squished. That's cool. He looks happy. Hello. I'm Ben and welcome to Masterclass on Climbing Helmets. So in this video I'm gonna share with you some fancy technologies that are finally making their way into climbing helmets in case you're looking for one. And just to make clear I'm not a helmet police. As always I don't like to tell you what to do, instead I like to show you what can happen. And that's why we wear a helmet. Did you see that? Yeah. I would have been tripped to the ER, Gavin. Woo! And, oh, I don't need a helmet, Gavin. Now I have to confess, confess, confession, that you will see clips on my channel of me climbing without the helmet. When I started climbing, most of my climbing peers did not use any helmets. And that, of course, influenced my behavior. Well, you know, monkey see, monkey do. So and also I used to look into professional climbers climbing without the helmet and they're probably saving some weight you know after all this helmet weighs as much as two quick draws so I would rather have two extra quick draws than brain I also had the sensation that if I'm climbing in very popular crag, it's unlikely that the rocks will fall, so I don't need a helmet for belaying. However, it turns out it was just pure lack of statistics. If I just go climbing a few weeks a year, I don't see much rock falls. However, last few years I've been climbing pretty much every single or every third day outside, and I've seen a lot of rock falls. And in the last year alone, I broke probably three or four rocks myself. Whoa! You good? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. That's why we wear helmets as a blare. All right, so these guys got scared to repeat the experiment with the broken helmet, so I brought another helmet. Thank you for Mammoth for sponsoring this video and sending me these helmets. I actually like this helmet a lot and I would like to not break it, but since I ordered them too small for me, I'm gonna give them to our friends. So a lesson learned, when you buy a helmet online, check out the sizing. Because some helmets have just one size, they can adjust much more, while others have multiple sizes. And it turns out that my head is not that small as I think. Why do you have only two sizes of helmets? I think for climbing it's kind of covering most of the 
of the area. For example, for this helmet, we have only one size. The thing, it will fit to everybody, but <laughs> if you really have a, a small head, it will look weird because it will give a lot of room in the back of the yeah. head. Yeah. So that's why, like all the climbing helmets we have are always in two sizes. So you really, you don't create this very wide opening around your head. You ready? Yeah. Let's climb. Yeah. What's his name? Jonas. So Jonas is a bit squishy today. <laughs> I hope uh, the weight of that massive rock is not gonna make uh, melon soup out of him. Okay. For shitty science. The sound from the top of the rock fall was like... Whoa, that's crazy. Now there will be probably two groups of people. One group will be calling helmet police. And another group will be saying that, oh, learn how to manage the rope between your legs. However, I have to say that this happens to the best. This is Alex Megos. Luckily for him, the wall was super crazy overhanging, so it's not a problem. And this is another pro on competition wall. Again, he was saved by amazing belaying and overhanging wall. And sometimes, okay looking situation might be not so okay. Here, her left leg is not behind the rope, however, her right arm pops, which launches her body into the spin, and then her leg gets behind the rope. Come on, Eddie. Ooh. Oh, boy. Uh, I wonder if these guys that don't wear their helmets I wonder if their heads sound like hollow coconuts when they hit that those walls. I wonder what kind of sound it makes. It makes like a, does it make a bonk sound? Or is it like a hollow, like nothing's inside my head sound? I don't know. And here is another crazy one. Ah, yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh. So he obviously messed up with his foot placements. However, oh boy, good job at having a helmet. So I could be showing you these clips all day, but I guess some of the people will still worry about their haircut more. So, oh well, natural selection will do its job. Oh boy. Woof. Upside down and around town. Now, as I mentioned, climbing helmets went a long way in their design to the point where I can take this helmet when I arrive at the crack, put it on and forget about it. I don't even feel that it's there. And sometimes I will even hike back to my car and only then take it out. Whoa. Whoa. You good? Yes. You all right? So you know that I like structure. So let's put all the helmets into two categories. So hard shell helmets, like this one, obviously have a hard shell outside. And these helmets are extremely durable. If you're planning to hit your head a lot, or you don't want to take care of your helmet too much and you want to just throw it around, then this is a great option. It's also much cheaper. But since I don't like hitting my head when I'm climbing and I prefer to use the helmet as an insurance, I like helmets that are lightweight, that are made mostly out of foam. This one is a hybrid, where it's like sides made out of foam and the top is hard. I used to use this before, which was only foam, but it looks a little bit like a mushroom. So not only these helmets are lightweight, they also have a huge ventilation holes, which means that unless you're climbing in direct sun on super, super hot day, you will not even feel that you have a helmet. 
Now what protects your watermelon from the impact is usually a foam in the helmet and there are two kinds of foams but you should not worry too much about that because manufacturers now started doing composites of them which means that manufacturers will choose which foam to put in which place of the helmet to maximize the safety and lightness and the price or to minimize the price. What you can also look at when you go to the store is like how far down do the helmets go. The further down the helmet goes, the more protection you have if you hit your head sideways or in the back. Mm -hmm. Like this one goes a little bit further down than the wall rider, than the new Skywalker, for example. I mean, we have the foam goes all the way down to the, the edge of the shell, which is really important because then you have foam also for impacts on the side. If you look at other helmets out there nowadays, they just have the foam in the top part. It's good if you have a rock fall from above, but if you take a fall, you smash your head sideways into the wall, yeah, you just have the shell and you don't have any foam protection. However, if your helmet is lightweight and made mainly out of foam, it can dent or even break very easily. So you need to carry him or her, whatever, it, with some love. For example, this is a helmet from my friend and it has already a crack. And this helmet never seen a hit. This crack happened in the airplane. All right, now when it comes to safety, there is a really cool technology which was used in other sports and it's finally making its way to climbing helmets and it's called MIPS. And it's basically this yellow insert plastic inside the helmet which moves a little bit. And that little plastic allows my helmet to move a little bit on top of my head. So if I would hit my head at the angle, Instead of my head going like Wah! the helmet would twist a little bit and that would reduce the peak force to the brain, which your brain don't like. Now I even feel something inside my brain after this demonstration. Don't twist your heads too fast. In the standard, it's tested up here. It's tested to 30 degree angle. What we also do, we have our internal testing standard and then we test the lower rim, meaning we test this part here, we test this part and also in the front and we make sure that the lower rim of the helmet is as strong as you know, the mid part of the helmet which is mm -hmm. tested in the standard. And you only have one head. You only have one head, that's a good one. <laughs> now for those of you who like to think a lot when you're climbing and that makes your head sweat too much and that uh, sweat kind of gets in your helmet and might start smelling, you can actually remove these paddings and wash them and put them back. And your helmet is not stinky anymore. You're welcome. Another tip from experience is this clip buckle thing which on this helmet is amazing. It's super easy to clip it and then some helmets like to have these magnetic clips <clears throat> that I absolutely hate because they attract dust and dirt to the magnets and then they don't function properly anymore. So good idea on paper, not so good in practice. Now pretty much every helmet will have some sort of clips in the front and the back and that's used for attaching a headlamp. As with everything in this consumerist world we have so many different options but if you are choosing a helmet, my recommendation would go with the fit. And the best way to do that, just go to a climbing shop and try different helmets. Because if you find a helmet which is really comfortable, you can put it on your head, forget about it and be safe. But if you care about your style more, then rest assured that climbing brands have dedicated designer teams to make all kinds of helmets and all kinds of designs and styles and colors and whatnot. How is this do? clay model done? Is it from the drawing 3D printed or...? No, no, this is... So the first is going from the drawing to the clay. And uh, from the clay... Once Handmade. 
Yeah, this is so handmade. Yeah. And then I'm spending hours and hours of yeah. removing like millimeters per millimeters to, to create the shape I want. One common question is, can I use a bicycle helmet for climbing? So a short answer, you can use whatever you want for climbing. You can put a pot on your head and go climbing. Just make sure to attach it somehow so it doesn't fall on your belayer. But if you care about the contents inside your head, you should use a helmet which is designed for climbing. Bicycle helmets have very aerodynamic shape and they have a lot of holes everywhere in the helmet for the best ventilation. And if the rock would fall, the rock can easily go in the ventilation hole and into your melon. And another big difference is that bicycle helmets only need to protect you from a single impact. After that, the danger is over. While in climbing, if you hit your head once and you would like to hit it twice or three times on a multipitch, for example, the helmet kind of needs to protect your contents from that. So can you use a bicycle helmet? Well, better than nothing, of course. But if you care about your contents, then you should get a proper helmet. Okay, so if you've been watching this video series till this point, now you know everything there is to know about every single piece of gear that you would use in sport climbing. And in coming episodes, we will put all of that into practice. And if you have been enjoying this series so far, you have to say thank you for every single person who sent me donations, because that's how I can make these videos that take so much effort to do. And if you want to contribute, check out my website. It has all the details how to do so. So thank you and see you soon.